This podcast and its content was created and recorded on Ghana land. We would like to acknowledge the Ghana people, the traditional custodians of the land we reside on and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Welcome to the joyous celebration that is Here We Crow, the podcast that's all about having a blast while soaring to victory. I'm your spirited host, Sam, and I'm joined by the dynamic duo of footy fun, Lauren and Ben. Today we're here to revel in the glorious triumph over the Brisbane Lions, but before we dive in, we have a little news to share. Our dear friend Dan is away, battling a ferocious foe known as the Man Flu. That's right, folks. Dan's currently wrapped up in a blanket fort, armed with a trusty box of tissues, and fighting the good fight against the mighty Man Flu. We send our best wishes and a virtual bowl of chicken soup his way. Absolutely, Ben. We miss Dan's infectious laughter and his knack for comedic timing. But fear not, dear listeners, because Lauren, Ben and I are here to keep the fun flowing and the laughter rolling. That's the spirit, Sam. We're a resilient bunch. And while Dan's away, we'll make sure to bring the extra laughter, joy and footy antics to fill the gap. You got it, Lauren. So let's kick off this episode with even more enthusiasm, more playful banter and a whole lot of footy fun. We'll dive into our glorious victory, sharing hilarious anecdotes and maybe even invent a few dance moves to commemorate the occasion. Oh, Sam. (laughs) (laughs) You know how to get the party started. (laughs) We'll dissect the game with a twinkler in our eyes, sprinkle it with an essence of dance. (laughs) Don't know where that's going (laughs) No, contagious laughter. Good. (laughs) And create a footy atmosphere that will make him proud once he's back in action. Absolutely, Ben. And to all our listeners out there, we invite you to join us in sending good vibes and virtual get well soon messages to Dan. Let's show him that the man flu has nothing on the power of footy camaraderie and a lively podcast community. So get ready, listeners, for an episode filled with triumph, laughter and a sprinkle of mischief. Here We Crow is the joyous anthem of footy fandom where we celebrate victory, share stories and wish our dear friend Dan a speedy recovery. That's the spirit, Lauren. Join us, (laughs) footy enthusiasts, as we keep the fun alive, sending love and laughter to Dan and embracing the joy of the game with every episode of Here We Crow. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we're back to normal now. (laughs) I hope we don't have many people just... Um, tuning in for the first time tonight. <laughs> uh, honestly, I can't wait to audition for Neighbours when it comes back. How good. Yeah, oh, I've, I'm pretty sure most of you probably guessed that uh, that intro was written to us by uh, ChatGPT. I put in there uh, just some very basic parameters and uh, that's what we got back. So I thought we'd do a little bit of role play. It hit, it hit the nail on the head. Though, Absolutely. Didn't it? Yeah, I didn't even tell him that Dan was sick. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I wrote the words myself. Yeah, yeah, he, exactly. He's probably at home wondering how we knew about the blanket fort. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Welcome, Lauren. Hello. Welcome, Ben. Thanks, Sam. We've won. Yes. We what beat a Brisbane. Game. How good was it? Such a good game. Not the best conditions on Sunday. Oh. It was a bit bit wet, bit cold. Um, didn't but matter. Did not matter. We gave that as a bit of an excuse for uh, our poor performance the week before, but uh, obviously back at home. It doesn't matter, does it? Nope. So, uh, no, that was great. We'll talk about that. We have – what else we got? We're talking to our go- – we got a Gold Coast Nuff. We got, yes, uh, we found one. We have found one. We found a Nuff and a former player, former I believe. Former player. I don't think he quite squeezed an actual proper game. He played for the reserves. Um, okay, but so it's not Rory Atkins is basically not, what no, Sorry, everybody. It's not <laughs> Rory Atkins. No, we got Tom Keogh coming in, uh, which should be fun. Excellent. And, uh, what else are we doing? Uh, we've got a few segments that hopefully we can get around. I based my Dan entire Lee. introduction on the chat GPT yeah, thing, not thinking about nothing. my actual introduction. <laughs> dog Act is back. Dog Act is back. Dan's yes. written a Dog Act even though he's not here. There's two, Actually, there's a couple of Dog Acts, so that should be fun. Uh, we'll talk about the game. We'll talk about the upcoming game. Yep. And just some more dribble, I guess. Yeah. 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 The first. Music. Gold rings. 
Sorry, oh, obviously first um, you were keen on that 58 stat again. <laughs> Jesus. It was your idea and you forget. Yeah, every sorry. Week. All right, go, Ben. All right, 58. Um, that was the, our score in our one point loss to Collingwood this year. So obviously I can reuse that next week for <laughs> their score. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tony Armstrong was taken with pick 58 in the 2007 draft. Oh. Now that is a stat. That's I a good like. stat. Oh, I just would say that we, for first time listeners, 58, it's the number of episodes we're up to. That's why we're concentrating yeah, on that. Yeah. And why is it taking you 58 episodes to tune in? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and why is this your last one? <laughs> um, and Don't also, need to that 2012 was our showdown victory, it was won by 58 and one young. Ricky Henderson kicked six goals. Oh, Ricky Henderson. Yeah. yeah. I, liked, I liked him. Then Excellent. That's off. it. That's well all you got. That's my three. Pretty nice good. Nice one, Ben. Uh, the beer tonight. We Lauren has brought this one in. Uh, Brahenny Brothers Brewers Breweries. I actually don't know the, the story behind this, but they sort of popped in like a year ago uh, with a bit of, you know, using a bit of an old Adelaide brewery story to get going. Uh, I haven't actually tried any of the beers. We've got double stout here and... Yeah, so far, so good. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, pretty happy with it. I was on special, so yeah. I like it even more. <laughs> what are you listening to this week, Lauren? Uh, this week, um, I'm actually uh, going to play a song for Dan, a song that he's listening to that I've never heard, that you actually told him to listen to. So um, this is new for me. Uh, it's Italia 90, and the song is Leisure Activities. Can you tell me any more about this? Or Nope. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> <laughs> I just like it. <laughs> Content barely concealed for leisure activities. For leisure activities, your contempt barely concealed for leisure activities. Leisure activities, if you hate so much, stop leisure using activities. It. <laughs> leisure activities. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like Sleaford Mods, yeah. who I'm actually seeing tomorrow night, yeah. strangely enough. but um, And some of their stuff sounds a little bit like Interpol. There's got a bit of like Interpol influence, I reckon. Um, Interesting. Some of the droney stuff that they do, it's quite good. All right. Mm. Cool. Maybe I'll check that out a little bit more. Mm. Kind of also reminded me of um, Shame a little bit as oh, well. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. There's a really cool little like jazz interlude song too, which I like. Or just like, like an old bar. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, All cool right. album. Like it. Thanks, yeah. Dan. Um, I've got another throwback for you this week um, because I haven't really been listening to music. I have just been going back to my DJ Megavix playlist, um, <laughs> which spans like honestly across decades and genres like yeah. nobody's business. But um, again, I kind of you know on the theme of the crows and the game on the weekend. Um, it, it was this song that popped into my head. The love is all around me And so the feeling grows It's written on the wind It's everywhere I go Oh, yeah, it is So if you really love me Come on and let it show Ode to the Crows, and it's an ode to the wet, wet, wet game mm. that we were at. On I Sunday. couldn't feel anything in my fingers or toes. <laughs> I think it was just nice that Lauren would play our song, Sam. <laughs> ah, you're welcome. Adelaide's rocking. All right, we won 14 11 95 to 10 18 78 against the Brisbane Lions on the yes. weekend. I don't think any of us tipped. Oh, Idiot Dan did, didn't he? But he, did, he, he was did it was the like most non-committal spite. tip ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we're not even going to pay that up, actually. Look, so the honest truth is that if Brisbane had kicked straight, we would have been in a bit of trouble, I reckon. Yeah, but, I've um, got this in my notes because, you know, I've got a bit of a thing about the, the kicking and, and I think oh, my yeah. – because I think, and it still applies to this, mm. that saying that Brisbane would have done better if they'd kicked straight is a bit of a cop-out into how that game was played. And it works into how I think about when we when we blame bad goal kicking for losing games. I absolutely understand what you're saying, and um, um, I don't necessarily think that they would have won if they'd kicked straight. Mm. I think it just would have been a harder game 
yeah. to win. Yeah, 100%. I think yeah. we played really well. Yes. Well, I mean, they only had one more scoring shot than us, so it's not as if that's right. they were so dominant with their I guess how many it, times they shot at goal. For sure. I guess it's just the goals that kind of change the momentum, though. Mm. So if they had kicked a few of those points, it probably would have been a little bit different. Yeah. Having said that, we did win, and it was a great win. It was. A fantastic win. I uh, I thought it was um, – I, I was with Ben at the game um, – and there was a point there in maybe the second or the third quarter where kind of Ben and I were just like, this is boring. <laughs> nothing, nothing was yeah. actually happening. Was <laughs> oh, that when it was down in the pocket, down yeah. the southern end? Yeah, yeah, it just kept going out. Yeah. We were down that end. so There it was, was, yeah, a lot of stoppages, just one after the other. And it's like, oh, geez, this is a long game. Yeah, it was, and then it yeah. Yeah, opened up as the game went on. But, and do you feel yeah. like, even though there wasn't a huge amount of goals scored early on, especially early on, that the, um, that the quarters went a really long time as well? It just, I don't know, it just... I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. It seemed like a long game, even though we're winning and it was enjoyable mostly. It, yeah. Yeah. I know where you're coming from. We had some good, some excellent performances from some players that have, um, you know, caught a bit of heat recently. Someone like Ben Keys certainly was back back in the game, uh, played a bit in the middle as well, which I thought was a good ploy, maybe against the old side. Well, again, he had that kind of tagging role on Lockie Neal and mm. it seemed... He just seems to kind of come out of his shell when he has that, like he has a purpose. When he has a job. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like a Kelpie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he was fantastic. Um, like some big performances from some of the players that we thought. Some huge tackling performances from from someone like Laird as oh, well. 16 tackles. Huge, massive. Yeah. Huge amount of the ball. I don't think it can be understated how good Laird was in this game. Mm. Um, like he's usually good. Don't get me wrong. But he... His all of his disposals had massive impact. I thought in this game, yeah, he was and he was pure brute. That Superman dive mark <laughs> from that kick from Tex was like unreal. Like you know, putting your body on the line like that when it's not really that, what you don't need to take that mark, but he did anyway. Like that's just yep. pure lady, isn't it? Like when Barry didn't go for the mark and Key scored the goal. Hey, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so obviously, the the two forwards, uh, Rankin and Rochelle, had. Big, big-ish big games and both kicked amazing goals, which I'm assuming everybody's gone out and voted for their favourite. Do we yep. have a favourite? What's um, What was your pick? Uh, ben? I think the Rankin one was more instinctive. It was just yep. get it and quickly get it on the left foot. I think Rochelle had a bit more time to sum it up. Um, so in terms of degree of difficulty, I'd say Rankin's was harder, um, but they were both pretty impressive in the conditions. I said the same thing to someone who tweeted us earlier today that asked which goal was better Um and I just, yeah, I said pretty much the same thing, Ben. Rankin was just pure instinct, which yeah. was w- wonderful to watch. But Rochelle's was pure skill. Yeah. Which is, you I, know. I think that's where I go with it. I think I, I give it slightly to Rochelle because it was just pure skill, whereas a bit of the Rankin's one was a bit of ass as well. Whereas, like, yeah, I don't know. Well, like, ass in a good way, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. But, and Rochelle did have to get under a player. Not just kick it straight, so that's it was right. pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah it both, was. both both excellent. excellent. Whoever yeah. anyone voted for, but um, what's the bet? Neither of them win goal nah, of the week. Well, not, <laughs> if, not if there's two for the same team and it's based on voting. Yeah, it's that's gonna right. Go to the guy who doesn't play on the same team, and also the Victorian player probably. Well, yeah, plays with the Victorian. Well, we team. all know that it should have been them. Yeah. So, what are we thinking about our home home ground performances versus away from home performances? Do you reckon there's anything in it? Well, it's hard to ignore, mm. but like. Just I don't know. Just what is the reason that we're not bringing the same intensity? Like, I don't want to hear that it's you know the crowd. Like mm. the crowd gets them over the line because um yeah. As uh, we spoke about to uh, our guest this week, mm. um, the crowd was pretty bloody loud. Yeah. But they were booing. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't. They weren't exactly cheering. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Uh, like we've played it. I think it was Ark Up maybe who put a tweet out today just showing where we've played this year. And considering it's in such a, such a short span of games, it's a disgusting lot of like grounds that we've had to play at mm. uh, across yeah, the first sort of 10 rounds. So I don't know. I, I'm prepared to give them a bit of a pass mark. It's a bit disappointing to see such a different side show up this week than last week. I think that's the... Like I was talking to my parents today and my mum's just like, that's the frustrating thing at the end of the game. You're happy, but it's like, where was that team last week? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, uh, look, I, I think they're young. They're, we're going to get these up and down performances uh, and to turn up against a premiership contender like that at home in conditions that we, before the game, thought were going to suit them more mm. uh, was, was just really promising to see. I think we're being like a little bit harsh on the critique 
in that scenario just because we are Crows fans. But, yeah. like, the media love us at the yeah, moment. They, they are sucking up our asses. Even David King was being positive. He's been, he loves Nixie apparently now. Yeah, well, you know, it's daddy. Daddy, it's daddy. Sorry. yeah. Get Here's into the guy, it. Well, last year he said there's no way Nix survives this rebuild. Was yeah, I think it was Late him. last year. Yeah, yep, yep. Well, that's because, you know, not, none of the media pundits knew any of the players mm. and now they're actually coming out and playing great footy and, you know, players like Saligo and Pedler and Rochelle and, you know, all of those young kids who are really stepping up, Murray, yep. they're all, all their names are on the tips of their tongues now. They know mm-hmm. exactly who they are. Um, Beautiful which, segue, Lauren, to Murray. Yeah. He, I was watching, we had a bit of a higher up vantage point this game because we uh, were sitting in the GA at the top of the Southern Stand. Mm-hmm. Watching Murray's body work um, during the game was just so good. When the ball was in the air, what he was doing to his opponent, I think it was Joe Danaher most of the day, yep. was just fantastic. He just, he, he bodies him in a way that just unbalances him. And obviously, you know, Joe Danaher is a very, very tall man. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing to see, compared, if we would listen back to some of our episodes from last year where Murray was playing and compare to what we're saying then to what we're saying now, it is a rapid rise to probably, what, top five defender in the league almost now, which would, is just ridiculous. I would say at the current time, he is our most important defender. Yeah. Like, straight up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you plug him in and you put in um, Michelini, who or Michelini, who's had a, who's come from nowhere, obviously not available last year, and he's been such a solid contributor as well. Mm. It's, it just, you can just see why our back line looks so much more stable than it did. Yeah, Michelini had his um, first real test, I thought, this mm. week um, on Cameron. A Cameron um, kicked four, but I feel like he still played well, um, Max. I he think still he, was, he did a great job. There was a few moments there where you could really tell that he was frustrated with yeah. his um, with just himself and yeah. um, things that he could have done better. Yeah, well, that was pretty obvious to me on the replay. But um, you know, it's very hard to keep a player like Charlie Cameron quiet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially on a ground that he knows very well. Yeah, so I, I think Max is. Uh, I, did, I think it was Tommy Duday was on the radio this – no, it was Brody Smith. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that he um, – Max is a, like a serious competitor. Like he literally goes out there and is basically like, I'm taking a scalp today. Like yeah. that, that's his attitude uh, to it. Uh, taking a soul, I think, was it, was the way that it was put. <laughs> so that's dark. Yeah. yeah right. So like that, that's the sort of attitude he goes out on the ground with. So obviously someone kicking four on him, he's not going to be happy with. Uh, in his defence though, Charlie played a great game, but at least two of his goals were – Junk. RC yeah. junk that just sort of trickled out the back. Having, having said that, his first one probably only he would score it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was um, yeah there was a couple of junky goals there for sure. Yeah. Uh, Riley O'Brien, Ben always accuses me of having uh, shit coloured glasses on when it comes to Riley O'Brien. Uh, I'm waiting with. Well, I breath. don't. I don't accuse you. It's just what you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was his best game of the year by a mile. I thought um, mm-hmm. way better than last week. I'm um, still not giving him the quiet achiever like you did last week, Ben. But um, he his uh, he just did what we need him to do this game. Um, it wasn't special. It wasn't like he wasn't a top flight ruckman, but he just did everything we needed him to do. He marked sort of what we needed him to mark. Mm-hmm. It was a, very much a passable performance. I can't believe you got through that sentence and mm. didn't. Mention when he tapped down to Lockie Neal and Lockie scored um, and yeah. ended up in a goal. Ignoring, no, ignoring that. that? Yeah. Well, well, and that? again, is that because of his tap or is it because Lockie Neal was the only one who wanted to move at that stoppage? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I think uh, Nuds brought that up in yeah. Sensible Crow this week. So. And very quickly to back up Sam there, Rob was a 36% hit out to advantage beating the big O, who was only on twenty eight percent. The so big O. We saw saw someone complaining about the 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 big O's being mentioned in mm. the game. Watching the replay, Jesus, I, I got sick of that pretty quickly. Thanks, so, Dwayne. Yeah. So I don't think he got the arm field, The big O. No? Uh, no, no, he wasn't great, was he? No, but uh, he did better than Harry Sharp, who I suggested he didn't make the team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did anyone see Led's heat map? which thought that was pretty interesting. He had a ton of the ball. He didn't have one disposal within the arcs, which is interesting. So he, he basically spent the entire game um, just between the arcs, which you'd kind of expect, but it's also kind of strange, I thought. So you know, he's obviously working to a, you know, east-west. I think, I think you're a week late on the interesting heat map for Laird, but sure. I was at the, did he have a penis one last week? Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> Always a classic. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, so, Ben, you got some stats? Uh, a few stats, yeah. So, 
Um, we had more of the ball, more possessions, which was basically more handballs. So in wet conditions, that doesn't always work out well, but we seem to do pretty okay with that. And despite having more of the ball, we beat them in tackles, sort of 88 to 72. So that shows that we were there for the fight. Um, for large portions of the game, um, the ball was in our defence. They had a lot more inside 50s, 66 to 46. So I think... The combination of them missing some chances but also our pressure on them meant that the damn wall didn't crumble. That first quarter and portions of other bits of the game, it just felt like, oh, um, Brisbane are going to eventually get this on their terms and kick a whole bunch of goals. But we we withstood it and then we had our chance with the momentum and took our chances. So we just looked dangerous every time we went forward, really. It felt like something could happen. And for so many years... We'd get it forward so often, but never feel like we'd kick a goal. So it's I'm much preferring this version. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, it's good to see. Yeah, and our disposal efficiency. I think partly because we handballed more than the opposition was up again around seventy percent. That was it. That's all stats. Did you want more stats? No, that's that's good. I like it. Um, another thing I wanted to mention was Rochelle uh, gathering the ball on the behind line, and instead of taking a snap, which probably. 95% of the crowd thought he was going to do and probably probably egging him on. Um, turned around and hit Saligo up to uh, 30 out on the angle. I reckon Fogg might have felt a bit um, uh, dirty being by himself in the goal square. I think that was how it ended up though. But if you look at it, the Brisbane player was there and then he sort of momentum sort of made him fall over sort of. So Fogg looked more in space. Yeah. And there. we did do a lot of handballs <laughs> that they smothered by jumping up and stopping it. Yeah, so. did you notice that too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there was heaps that we'd handball and they just, yeah. Jump up and, and... Yeah, like volleyball style blocking a spike. It was almost like it was a bit of a, a thing, wasn't it? That they'd obviously knew that we have that sort of handball happy um, behind the... the um, after the centre happens, goes back, and then you see quite often see da- um, Dawson or Laird there and they're handball happy to get a little bit of space. So, yeah, it was, it was interesting seeing that. A couple mm. of them cost us badly too. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Got some votes? Yep. Do them, Lauren. Uh, giving three to Laird, um, as I said before, I thought his impact was quite significant and obvious this week. Um, only 27 disposals, didn't hit the 30 mark, but 16 tackles, seven clearances, 27 pressure acts. Um, and, yeah, just some courageous footy from Rory, which is great to see. Uh, two votes goes to uh, Captain Dawson. Um, again, Another great game from Dorse, 32 disposals, 10 tackles, 25 pressure acts, 20 uncontested possessions. There was one um, play there where he just kind of streamed out of the middle and he just looked like a horse galloping <laughs> through the middle and I was like, was damn. Yeah. <laughs> it looked great. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, giving one, and I've got to say, giving the one vote was so hard this week because there were so many standout players. Um, you know, Murray, uh Pedler, bloody Rochelle, you know, Miller, God, so many, but I gave it to Rankin yep. for the special goal. Two special goals, actually, uh, 23 disposals, four clearances. And uh, just, yeah, really pleased uh, for Rankin that he got to light it up on Adelaide Oval in Sir uh, Douglas Nichols' round. Absolutely. Benjamin, what do you got? Same as Lauren. Oh, nice. <laughs> Very good. Does anyone have ban- uh, Dan's yes. votes up? You got them there? I'll do uh, that. He's given oh, go. three to Dawson, two to Rankin, and one to Laird. Nice. <laughs> so we've all ended up with the same. <laughs> oh, I've gone. I've, 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 I've got a different order though. I've actually gave three to Rankin. Uh, I just thought the amount of ball that he got, as well as the goals that he kicked, uh, I just wanted to put him top. Laird was absolutely amazing. Huge amount of tackles. Huge amount of the ball, and gave one to Dawson. Uh, Dawson had some some kicks that you know, maybe weren't amazing again. Uh, a yeah. bit similar to the week before, but he just gets so much of the ball and I just I hope that he doesn't stop trying to bite off some of those kicks. I think I might have I might just be repeating myself here, but um yeah, I just I want him to keep doing them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Understandable. Hi, I'm Tyson Edwards. You're such a quiet, quiet achiever. Probably a lot of players that everyone could put in here, but who you got, Lauren? Uh Luke Pedler. Nice. Ben? Uh, Miller. What did Dan have? Miller. Nice. And I had Murray. So we've we go. we got three different ones. I think realistically the whole back line could have got it. Yeah. Um, they, <laughs> yeah. they kept us in the game and yeah. um, no, none of them got our votes. Um, but yeah. so It's just a bit so unlucky. hard, isn't it, to yeah. give the back line votes. It's yeah. also just really hard in general because 
everyone was so good. Like Rory Sloan in that second half yeah. was enormous. Rory Sloan is a fourth quarter specialist. It's, yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah. He's just savage. Yeah. And like, you know, Tex had another good game as well. Like, I mean, for, for a three goal game, he was still pretty quiet, but mm. he definitely stood up, played for a free uh, that worked. So you know. I love the crowd's reaction to that. And then when the replay was shown, everyone just started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, not much in that. <laughs> I don't know. I thought, uh, yeah, just a lot across the board. Sholly, even really good composure. Yep. Um, just great ball use. I don't know. Miller Miller was fantastic. Probably his best game yep. um, to date. Again, just really love that him and Rankin brought it for Indigenous round. Uh, and. You know, the loom is back, baby. If you want to know what's in the spring, get into Rowan Jarman. Plenty of good things overall, but I'm going to keep it short here. Um, Lauren, this one, this is one for you. Did you see that mm. Royal Blood footage from the weekend? I don't like it, that band. Oh, don't you like them? Oh, okay. <laughs> no. oh that it was pretty funny. They um they came out at a um, BBC live sort of thing, mm. and uh, they got squished between a member of One Direction and. Uh, someone called Lewis Capaldi. Oh, um, I know Lewis Capaldi. Oh, yeah. He's hilarious oh, really? and he's Scottish. Yeah, right. Which is why I like him. Anyway, they came. Obviously, no one cared about Royal Blood no. and uh, in that crowd. Uh, so they got no reception and they started to clap themselves and then just threw their guitars on the ground, gave the finger to the crowd and walked off. That sounds exactly <laughs> like. Those dudes would act. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, I didn't realise that they stuff. were. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realise they were like that. Yeah. I knew that their lead singer was. Um, he used to be pretty heavy on the drugs, but mm. had had come clean recently. But um, yeah, dearie me, I put it in the goods because I thought it was just funny. Yeah. Um, but I'll uh, have to check it out. Yeah, but uh, I'm yeah. sure Lewis Capaldi had a great reaction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, I had another excellent palmy at the Exeter on the uh, before the game. So yeah, uh, yeah, thanks for the invite. I did invite you. Yeah, when you were already there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know we were going there until really late. It's okay because I was hungover. And yeah. <laughs> I was still in my pyjamas. I was like, I'm not going anywhere until the game's on. Anyone that hasn't been there for food, don't judge it. It's excellent. The Exeter Hotel yeah. Pie. Mm, you love is the pie, don't you? The best winter pub meal. Yeah. Go get it. Mm hmm. Footwear sacrificed at half price and equipment slashed to half price. Rowan Jarman's huge half price sale. Don't miss it. Lizzie dragged me along to the vintage and costumes, vintage and costume sale, which was from the state theatre that they put on. It was uh, in Thebedon on Saturday. Yeah. And you're, is this in your bads? Yes. Is this because you didn't invite me and I'm spewing? <laughs> no. This is in my bads because. It was one of the just the worst sort of human experiences I think I've ever had to <laughs> deal with. So okay. we wa- it was busy as anything. Mm. It was just packed and it was in a shed. But there was just all these people there that had just rushed in and the, either they were either cheap asses, I don't know, or they were like trying to profit off of it. And they were just shoving jackets and like – Vintage clothes in gigantic bags. Yeah. Like they'd obviously rocked up early to to sort of benefit somehow from this. And it was just people just running all around. Like it was just madness. I lasted about 30 seconds in there. I'm like, Lizzie, my like whatever I've got wrong with me can't deal with this. And I was out. I couldn't deal with it. overstimulated. I had to leave. Uh, It was a very really weird experience. If anyone went there. Theatre people. Yeah. Yeah, really strange. Anyway, Lizzie came out and um, actually agreed with me afterwards. So um, I'll tell you what, there's something about vintage and secondhand things, um, and I blame TikTok for a lot of this, but people are mental. Um, oh, is that right? They want to okay. flip that shit so bad. Yeah, righto. You okay, know, that might have been there's it. There's a bit of an estate sale craze going around on TikTok where people go and buy like dead people's things, oh. which like I'm down for, mm. but... Um, you know, it's got, it's just a bit cra- a bit hectic. Yeah, yeah, it was just weird, and like it was okay if people were just in there shopping and just buying things for themselves, but they clearly weren't. So yeah. it was just a very strange experience. Um, anyway, I uh, same very very similar timing. I then walked out to the car and uh, sat in the car, put on five double A, and this was Saturday morning. Uh, KG and Cornsey were on, mm. giving the uh, the mild racists a bit of a uh, platform to speak their mind about uh, Sir Doug Nichols round and uh, the voice. Uh, it was very weird. Um, I'm all for everybody having you know their choice. We're obviously having a referendum for a reason. People can choose whatever they want to sort of choose. I know 
people have their own opinions on this, so I'm not judging anyone's opinions, but it was just a very weird thing because people were ringing up sort of complaining about Sir Doug Nichols' round and why it needed to go for two weeks. And like KG was sort of agreeing with them and sort of half-egging them on. It was just a, I don't know, it just felt yucky. <laughs> the state of media yeah. is atrocious. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't great. Anyway, uh, Cody Waitman staging for free kicks. Uh, needs someone just can't they fine him? There is a rule there for staging free kicks that you can get fined and suspended. Yeah, I don't know why they don't do it. He clearly is staging for them. It mm. almost cost uh, Gold Coast a game last week, and it would have been a travesty. Yeah, uh, he is a grub. Uh, and my last one: signs in the crowd asking for players' boots and Guernseys getting overdone. Isn't needs it needs to stop? Oh, look, I oh, like I'm okay if you're like a nine year old kid and you're trying to do it, but. Clearly, you didn't do the sign. It's your parents encouraging it, and I don't like it at all. <laughs> now, when we went to the Crows Open training um, the other week, I went down to the Adelaide Oval, and uh, a girlfriend of mine her, took her kids, and one of her daughters had a sign for mm. Saligo's boots. Yeah. Now, she's like 14. Yeah. So, I I accept this. She's mm. young. She did the sign herself, um, and she did end up getting Jake's boots. Jake graciously uh, gave her a signed pair of smelly boots yeah. and then signed <laughs> the sign yeah, right. uh, that she made. Um, so she was absolutely stoked. Yeah. But it is now like it's, it's turned it's into epidemic. a whole thing. Yeah. And um, like these boys don't have that many boots to spare. No, no, that's right. <laughs> well, maybe I'll take back the nine. I think you're right. Maybe if it's a 14 year old kid, at least they might have done it on their own accord um, of course, whereas yeah. if it's younger than might and have she, been. you know she might have the opportunity to wear those boots at some point <laughs> yeah, that's she right. might grow into them oh don't get me wrong players giving their stuff out to it's the crowd is, is fantastic but I get Love what it. you're saying yeah you, I saw like I was watching games on the weekend and you see them in the crowd they're everywhere yeah, like, there's kids hanging them over the fence just go buy some boots get them signed you don't yeah. need the actual boots yeah don't like it not at all <laughs> yeah back in my day we just had the autograph book and you tried to fill that up and god that, I don't even have happy. a book Ben I like used to take old bits of bloody newspaper and shit, like <laughs> anything I could find. Yeah. Dog act. That's right. Dog act. Lauren bringing the dog act yep. tonight. Or maybe Ben's going to bring one. I don't know. What did we what actually did we, decide? Yeah, I don't know. Did we actually decide that? <laughs> well, I think we're still working it out. I think the reaction to mine was pretty lukewarm, so we probably go with, <laughs> with Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I just want to um, just double check the internet right now because um, our first dog act uh, is well, it's a bit. Of, it's actually a bit of combination of a bit of Vic bait and um, uh, yeah. dog act. But uh, obviously, Roy Laird being suspended for a match um, with the tackle on Lockie Neal, the so-called sling tackle. Now, I would say that the tackle itself, to me, looked. Decent, and um, it looked to me like momentum, the momentum of Lockie Neal's body actually made it look like a slingy type thing. Are you Mm. suggesting floppy Neal? Floppy. (laughs) Flop. Big flop. Yeah. Is that the Channel 9 guy on Twitter that called said he was flopping? I don't know. I thought that was my own hilarious stinger. Oh, no. But uh, (laughs) obviously uh, the Crows are actually appealing that at the moment, so – that is about to start now, so we'll we bring shall it to you find live. out what happens. Um, but obviously it is a pure dog act from the MRO. Not to mention the effect on my fantasy team. I know. That was my captain. Gone. Shit. I've already lost Darcy. I've already lost Sicily with his stupid little punch. Oh, no. Jeez, Ben, we've got to save this for the fantasy segment. Are you going to press the buttons, Sam? Are you going to keep What's this? reading your message? I'm ready to do the dog act. Oh, yeah, I can do that. When you're banning a tackle from the ferrets of the mall, you know it's a fuck call. Dog act. Nice. I could have done that better, but it's all right. We've got another yeah, one. It's a bit flat. Can you give us a bit more with this one? Or is Ben doing it? Well, nah. If you're not, not looking for flat, I'm not doing it. No. Yeah, true. All, all right. right. Give us some gusto, Lauren. <laughs> When you are a Brisbane grub, you give peddlers eyes of grubs or go, you dumb fuck. <laughs> dog act. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. I need Dan back to do the dog act. That music's really loud in our headphones. I think we need to tone it down a little bit. What now. I wanted to say was, Zorko, you dumb fuck. <laughs> dog act. Do you want to do it again? I just did it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Seems uh, so, so out of character for a man of um, Zorko's stature as well. Yeah, doesn't Look, it? Look, I don't rag on players too often, as we know, but Zorko, you have got. The biggest little man syndrome I've ever seen. Mm. 
don't fucking touch peddlers. <laughs> Beautiful iris eyes. Thanks. Lauren, we had no swear warning until this segment. You've ruined it. I'm on this show. What do you expect? <laughs> Just put it on by default. Anyway, Zorko, You're you grub. grub. Yep. Dog act. We've got another dog act from Matty C. Thanks, Matty C, friend of the pod. Uh, this one's for the Thebiton Nimbies. Um, but I will say this. Apparently 5,500 people mm. have signed a petition against the uh, Crows development in Thebiton. Now, there is nowhere near that many people living in that suburb. So mm. is there some sort of like weird campaign that support supporters have put on to try and yeah, prevent it's this happening? It's Koshy's mate. Like, get a fucking life. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> next. Okay. We just want a home to train. They do nothing but complain. Fogs without a brain. Dog act. <laughs> nice. I'm getting better and better. Yeah. As all the times that Dan were here. Yeah. Right. Well Thanks. done. Thanks, Maddie. Yeah. And we'll get another Ben one at some stage as well. Oh, it, you know, it's in high demand. He thinks it's not, but it is. Yeah, it is. I got asked on the weekend for another dog act from you. So don't do Did it all you? the time, he said. You got one on the fly, Ben? Or? I'm not going to do it all the time. You're safe there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Out of bounds on the full. Social media. What do we got? Uh, oh my god, I don't even know. Let's have a look. Um, flaky thirteen. If Dwayne said the big O's five or nineteen more times, I was going to suggest Rue boot him in the big O. D- yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, that was. Um, I obviously didn't. We went. We all were at the game, so we didn't see it. But uh, yeah, watching the replay, and uh, I saw this comment before I watched it, and it's literally the first thing Dwayne says in, when the game starts. It's mm. oh boy. Okay, uh, quirky. I acknowledge uh, your comment, but I don't want to go into that because I don't think I'm um, talking about the designs of the indigenous Guernseys and what they look like is relevant to what they mean. So I'm going to skip over that one. Call me woke because I am. Yeah. Uh, he's got a point though, doesn't he? A bit. You can you can go on the internet and read that point if you need to. Uh, Bozza, I know that Lauren won't be happy with this, but I love the booing of Judas Cameron and Gunson and fully support all booing of players that leave us, especially for more money. Tippett, Gunson, 35, Lever, McGovern, Cameron, etc. Fair game in my opinion. Leave and you're dead to me. <laughs> now, I don't like booing generally and uh, – I especially don't like that we boo Charlie because even though he did leave us for m- for more money, um, it was a tumultuous time at the Crows and I don't actually blame him for leaving. Um, but what I didn't like about Charlie being booed this weekend specifically was that it's Sir Doug Nichols round. <laughs> like, come on, people. I If you want to boo him in any other game, any other round, mm. um, whatever, go for it. But it's just this weekend, really? Like, come on. I absolutely love the booing that Gunston gets. <laughs> uh, Tippett, Lever, McGovern, all the rest of the ones that Boz has mentioned there, really. Mm. Um, but, yeah, uh, like the mail I got was that Cameron actually didn't want to leave. So I find the booing of him a bit strange. But um, yeah, yeah, I just don't like it. And clearly because he's still friends with people at the Crows and, you know, I don't think there's any hard feelings there. So I just – I don't like it. And it's, it's the same as, like, Frampton. Like, why, mm. why are we booing Frampton? Like, that's silly. Oh, well, that was stupid. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Absolutely. that's just my opinion. Bozza, I respect your opinion. That's fine. Um, labs. The only downside to Miller's form is the amount of times Dwayne says sidestep through the call. <laughs> yeah, because clearly he's weaving. He doesn't know any. D- Dwayne just has like four or five words that he just wants to use constantly. It's so irritating. Mm. Uh, Pete Nash wants to submit Casbolt for the Armfield Award against Gold Coast. He'll kick four goals, he says. Ooh, yeah, that's not a bad shout, actually. Yeah, I could see that happening. I don't want to see it happen, but I could see it. And uh, we had also a little bit from uh, G, uh, who says, can we give three votes to just the entire back six as a unit? 28 scoring shots allowed on 67 inside 50s against what was the third most efficient offence in the comp. Feels as if we might be the toughest team to score against in repeat entries. They stood on their heads all game. And I'm sure you'll mention the amazing games so many of our forwards and mids played, but I want to give a special shout out for Fog. Six score involvements and a goal assist on 10 touches. Crash packs shepherded and moved into space. 
was effective without scoring. Absolutely agree. And I'm, we should have probably done Fog Watch tonight um, just on that tweet alone. Yeah. Um, Fog has been pretty quiet the last couple of weeks and hasn't really um, kicked any goals. But uh, G, you are absolutely 100% right. He does. He just uses his body uh, really well and um, knows how to play the ball for other people to get goals. Love it. Love it. What's she got over there? Uh, we have poorly drawn crows. Zorko hey. is a grub. Agreed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, apologies to poorly drawn crows. He did hit us up uh, on the... Uh, the uh, Here We Crow Instagram, seeing if we wanted to meet up at the game, and I didn't see it. So apologies for that. We'll do that at the West Coast game. Oh, dear. Uh, Daniel Altman, Zorko, what kind of human being does that in the first five minutes to a 10-ish game player? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's copying it probably rightly so, Zorko, this Zorko, week. Zorko, you're a dorko. No one likes you. A dorko. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't hit him until right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is a burn. Uh, what do we got? Digger. Are, hey. we the, are we the worst at not sending the ball through for a rushed point and costing us goals? He's got a he's got a very good point here. We are we do not like rushing it. No, but, we we do seem to averse to doing that for some reason. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know what it is. Um, obviously, you know, there's obviously that scare because obviously you don't want to give away the free kick so mm. it's better that you try and scramble it out than give away a free kick but I thought the players would be quite across that now and what it's, they can get away with. It's funny because they're pretty good at like dragging the ball over the line on the boundary like doing a, doing a sneaky like I'm getting tackled weirdly over the line mm. so why can't they do that on the goals? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm. Kate for the goods. Oh I didn't read these in my goods. Oh, no. oh, I could have added. What have you got? I would have had two then. Uh, AFC being labelled a destination club. How the tables have turned. Mm. Yeah, I heard that comment. That was uh, was that Hutto or someone on that uh, first crack show, saying that we're gonna we are gonna potentially lure some uh, good players yes. with, with the way that we're performing. And uh, they, they were potential. They were also really talking up uh, Daddy. That was the that was the they theme of daddy. the segment. They uh, got to get around the Daddy bit though, don't they? They do. Got to start do. calling him Daddy Nicks, and then we have achieved greatness. Yeah. Maybe we need to like hit Dicko up. Dicko's on that show, isn't he? He's probably on Twitter. He might be loose enough to run that out. Run a Daddy? Yeah, yeah I reckon. Cool. Uh, Kate also says for the bin. I oh, would we'll add another one there too. The emerging trend of the MRO sanctioning an act that was awarded a free kick in the game. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's a bit of a mess at the moment, isn't it? I think we brought up a few weeks ago, it was either on the podcast or just in general conversation about the Brownlow and how they're going to have to change the rules on that because if players are getting suspended for tackles that are, you know, just gone a touch rogue, um, we're going to have way more instances of players winning the Brownlow who have been suspended uh, and it's not going to be pretty. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just like... Are you just trying to prove that you should have your job at this point? Like, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Like I, I, I love that they're protecting the head now, and that that's a, it's becoming a thing. I don't know. Some of these are such fine calls that, yeah, I don't know. Oh, we actually got one well, from Mum. Sorry, you go. I'm just saying the problem is that these calls get made, and then players use those calls to obtain free kicks from them. So then it becomes a lot harder to tell was that a bad tackle or was that the guy extenuating the tackle it's mm. it's gets very frustrating yeah absolutely uh, we actually had one from adrian buck as well a bit earlier um it was actually yesterday great bounce back after the previous week's shit show rankin and rochelle goals were special we need to get some wins away off to kuala lumpur wednesday for a wedding followed by a week in bali hopefully get to watch the games might be some aussies in bali <laughs> you reckon there's <laughs> <laughs> half of them you are aussies in one. bali <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you won't see a local more like it. Um, Tony Skews, uh, not specifically fantasy related to our comp, but just had my third draw this season in my draft league. Oh, yeah, and I beat Sam Mahoney, whoever that is. Wasn't that Sam Mahoney? <laughs> Could be Sam Mahoney. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who he is. Um, yeah, no, he, Sam him. Mahoney's having an absolute nightmare in fantasy this year. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, and Dan had his first loss for the season this week, so yeah. he got beaten by... Oh, no, this wasn't a lead-in to speak yeah, about. Oh, no, this is, no not at all. Into it. So um, Collective Mids took down Dan, so he's leading the comp. I have to play him this week, so... I'm still out of the top eight. I can't so. believe you're not in the top eight. It's <laughs> so I'm, funny. I'm, I'm feeling a bit frustrated. <laughs> I'm actually mirroring the Crows in terms of wins and loss. So like I'm six and five and I almost seem to be whenever they win, I get over my opponents. So Yeah, right. But six and five isn't enough to get you into the top eight in our mm. league at the moment. Mm. So 
We'll see if I can pull myself up there, but I feel like my you'd team's be, probably peaked already, so I'll probably start losing some games. You'd be top two or three points scored, wouldn't you? I'm third for points, yeah. 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 So, and Unlucky. Um, Crips on Zip's update, he is still ranked um, just 1,100, so he's still right up there. Um, Crips on Zip's is uh, first, sorry, I just said that name. Collective mid second, and I am third for overall. If Crips Unzips listens to this, can you let us know who, know who you are? There will be a prize this year for well, it's Daniel. fantasy as well. Dan- well yeah, Daniel L, but do we know who Daniel L is? I don't know who anyone no. is. No. <laughs> I think I might know who it is, but oh. I'll have to double check. Okay. I think it's a Twitter person. Okay. I'll double check though. Um, yeah. What else we got? That it? Oh, Bozza. Selections. No, yeah. before we get to selections, um, I want to uh, talk a little bit about, you know, Fox Footy saying we're a destination club or whatever. Mm. Uh, lots of chat about Mason Redmond. Yeah. Apparently, we've offered seven to eight hundred k as a free agency contract offer. Now, that's great. I don't know anything about Mason Redmond, so I can't comment on him as a player. Um, you know, I don't care about any other players. Um, you know, the you only care about him once, once he's it's a signed yeah. and he's coming. Yep. But uh, <laughs> do you think that uh, signing uh, Redmond for such a large amount of money, like, there's not to say he's going to come, but. Um, does that worry you about uh, Tom Dude perhaps re-signing a contract? A touch, yeah. Um, I think, mate. I think if the money's true, I think I saw a comment floating around that if that money's true, then maybe we have higher aspirations than half back for Redmond. Mm-hmm. He's seems like the word is that he's capable of playing midfield. Played a lot of midfield in his junior juniors, so uh, he's an extremely handy player. He's someone that if we are able to get our hands on him for 750, then I'd say we jump at it. Um, yep. he is definitely an upgrade on a few players that we have in the side at the moment, or oh, actually quite a lot of, that'd be rude to say, not say that he's quite a few players in our team. <laughs> and we'd be so, paying up money wise, but not draft pick wise. I'm yeah, guessing. exactly. That's yep. it. So, and 750 seems like a lot of money, but realistically over the years that it's, the contract would be, it's not like, it's not a huge amount of money. Like it, it, the, yeah, the, the, obviously that will dissipate as the cap goes up. So mm. it's yeah, not, not compared to what we're earning. Well, no, that's right. Like merch sales have gone through the roof, haven't they? <laughs> Since I started wearing Since this Since you jumper. guys bought some. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Actually, to be fair, let's talk about this here. Uh, we got some merch. We got a whole bunch of merch in. Yeah. And um, I have to say, the printing on it is fantastic. So if anyone's on the fence about thinking that, you know, because we were getting these um, drop ship that the printing would be a bit shit. Uh, I can allay your fears there. It and uh, I've got to say also, we've had just a wild weekend of the Rash Rank yeah. uh, duo and we have a fucking shirt with two of them on it. <laughs> They're both on it. The Kings of Hearts shirt. Yeah, I got one and Buy it was good. You can yeah. also get it in sweater form and I it's and fucking heard freezing. And anyone so get wearing one. that, the players are very happy to autograph that for yeah, you. Yeah, I bet oh. they would. Yeah, they they would absolutely be. would. In yeah. fact, that is my mission now is to get them to sign it. Yeah. Lauren's finished her stouts so now she's swearing more. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a bit surly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm no, out of here. But um, no, 100% if, if, um, if Redmond is, is keen to come here, then I'll jump on it. I always am wary when you see these reports come out because we've seen it before with the Crows. Uh, they use us as a bit of a lure. We've obviously got a bit of money in the cap. Uh, bump up that, um, you know, the the offer from the current club and, um, yeah, they stay. So I'm not uh, counting anything. But it does sound like there's some interest. And apparently he's from somewhere like halfway between Adelaide and Melbourne anyway. So yeah, southeast somewhere. Yeah, so. But they talked up, yeah, will day, will day, and then, yeah, re- re-signed yeah. with Hawks. So yeah. we'll see. We've seen mm, it before. It's true. All yeah. right, got Boz's selections. That's now, just before we see what Boz says, do you guys have any thoughts on selections? Because uh, we just kind of let Boz take the reins for some reason. Yeah, we do. Um, we've obviously got okay. So Shane McAdam will be available this week um, if he gets through training, mm. um, but I can't see him coming into the side straight away because he would probably need to play at least a couple of weeks of Sample. Mm. He'd be a handy player to take for this sort of game, but um, mm. yeah, I don't think they'll risk him. We also have Mitch Hinch, uh, mm. who's coming back from from concussion protocols. Yep. Is I want he going to get back in the side? I want him back in, but I don't know who you drop. Well, I, I think it would be really unfair to drop Josh Worrell after such a good game. So, yeah, yeah that's a hard one. Yeah, it's a tough one. Do he, we do we give um, Michael Annie a rest soon? He has played every game. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's probably not. It's probably something that would be discussed mm. for sure. Uh, you know, do, do we necessarily need to take him to a hot game in Darwin uh, when we could bring Hinge back to play a sort of similarish role? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting one. Oh, I, like, I really want Hinge back in the side, but it's easy to say that when you don't have anyone to put up to take yeah. out. And you got Brody Smith, yeah, wanting to get back in. Oh yeah, of course, Brody. Yeah, How can I forget wow. Broads. Mm. <sighs> Depth. Yeah, love Sorry. it. All right, let's see what uh, Bozza has to say. Good evening, podcast peeps. Round twelve selections from the sauna this week. Um, I haven't checked Twitter, so I'm not sure what's going on with this lead situation. But uh, I have just one change this week. It'll be Hinge in for Laird Smith to have another week off. And Ned to go back onto the subs bench. So that's about it. Um, obviously, I gave uh, Lauren a bit of a discussion point today in regards to Charlie Judas Cameron. <laughs> uh, I'm not a fan of his. And, uh, yeah, we know. Never have been since he left us. So um, discuss the situation I tweeted earlier today. But anyway, um, that's it for the selections. Thanks again. Speak to you next week. Cheers, Boz. Like it, Bozza. We have discussed. We have already done it. Yeah, yep. we've beaten you to the punch. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, le- yeah. If Laird is out, who comes in? Is that uh, Haitley or is Pedler getting a look in to the middle and someone comes in half forward role? Mm, they might do the shuffle potentially. Mm. Do you think McHenry will keep his side spot? Um. <laughs> oh look. I didn't think he had like a. It wasn't a bad game. It wasn't it was a bad game. It just wasn't as – it didn't seem as impactful as when he's been the sub because he's just come on and done some good shit and gotten a lot of disposals in a short amount of time, whereas it was your worst nightmare having Murphy and McHenry on the I same know. side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of that. So I would be more than happy for McHenry to, to go out for someone, but obviously we'd need a bit of a shuffle around, although – Does Murphy come out? And McHenry stays in. I think Murphy has to stay. I think that's a, this is a game that will suit him. Well, we it? discussed um, he might be a bit tired after getting um, as soggy as he did on the yeah, weekend. Yeah, he was a soggy boy, wasn't he? Soggy? Oh, because he's long sleeves. Is that what you were oh, saying? He just, no, he just of looks, all the players on the very field, wet. he looked the wettest. He just looked the wettest, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Old sog man. Enough is enough is enough. Enough is enough. Another Scooped up by the Gold Coast Suns at pick three in the 2016 rookie draft. Our Nuff tonight has had an illustrious career at Sample level, winning the Foss Williams medal for best of field in the state game against WA in 2015, winning the Sample Premiership that year and captaining West Adelaide Football Club for the last five years. Plus, don't forget kicking two goals in uh, the Foxtel Cup, which everyone will remember that. Uh, in 2023, he's back in the country captaining the Southern Mallee Suns and, look, and kicking goals for fun, according to the research I've done this afternoon. My partner Lizzie is happy because we finally got one of her guest selections on the podcast. Welcome, Tom Keogh. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a pretty nice rap, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, looking at your – I saw you at the West Adelaide um, sort of email or the, the thing that got sent out when you uh, were leaving the club and saw the Foxtel Cup listed at the bottom and that was a bit of a, a flashback. <laughs> uh, I've almost forgotten about that. Oh, that is actually embarrassing. I remember that night. I reckon I touched it about twice down in – down at Amy Stadium in front of zero fans. Um, <laughs> and it was summed up perfectly because in our, well, I don't want to call it, Foxdale Cup Premiership photo, yeah. uh, you can only just see my forehead. <laughs> so <laughs> it was perfect because it was about as much as I had involvement in the game. So, yeah, what nice. a highlight. What a highlight that was. Yeah, that was so good. Oh, that was a bit of memory lane stuff there. That was good. <laughs> um, all right, you're the first ex-player we've had on as an opposition nuff. Um, did you have an interest in the Gold Coast before you were drafted there? And, and what made you continue to support them after you left? Um, yeah, yeah, not, 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 I suppose not too much. I was actually a mad Crows fan growing up, like tragic, uh, cut Andrew McLeod out of an advertiser and stick him on my wall type <laughs> operator. Nice. So, um, yeah, definitely a mad Crows fan. But I suppose then we started playing, I was playing Sanford footy and we had to play against the Crows and power reserves and sort of learned to hate them a little bit because we had to play <laughs> against them and try and beat them. So, um, yeah, it was sort of, I, I was, I, I love, I love footy by that point and I um, sort of watched everyone, but, um, Gold Coast probably weren't one of my closer teams but um, during my time up there obviously got to know a lot of the boys and had a fantastic time and obviously didn't, didn't work out for me it wasn't quite good enough but uh, still enjoyed my time there and got close to the few lads up there still so yeah. followed them closely now and a paid up member and 
part of the nuffies yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it that's great uh you you were up there during the rodney ed era is that right was he, was he yeah that's correct yeah. yeah that would have been <laughs> interesting yeah. time to be there i would have thought yeah a real successful period in the club's history. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we, liked, we did like a bit. I mean, it was an interesting time. I mean, the list went through a lot of change. Um, part of that was me on a, on a rookie list. And at the end of the year, I think we had, I think, 2016 draft. I think that was, I forget who was in that one. Might have been Lacocious in that. Um, oh, yeah. And that was, we had picks two, six, nine, 15. Like we had, we had six picks in the top 30, I think. So yep. naturally, I was sitting there on a rookie list like a sitting duck going, well, <laughs> <laughs> my spot's probably gone to clear out the whole list. So, yep. um, yeah, Rocket was, a, was an interesting coach. The, the couple of sprays, you hear why he gets called Rocket. Um, mm. That high pitch is still ringing in my ears a bit. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. It was a good experience. Uh, not <laughs> Obviously, it wasn't good enough to quite to crack it, but um, still enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the the rumours were that the, the conditions up there were a little bit interesting at the start of the Gold Coast. Is that is that something that was, would be fair to say? Well, I think I think early on, I mean, when you when you draft, I suppose, pick up, I suppose, you know, the most talented, which I suppose, eighteen to twenty-one year olds, you're going to have a bit of a tough time creating that professional environment straight away. But mm. um, co- uh, contrary to what I actually thought when I got up there, it was actually extremely professional by the time yeah. I got there. And I think um, I missed sort of the Harley Bennell and that sort of time and Charlie Dixon. So I got there just after that. So I think <laughs> those boys I, I heard, and yeah, you, you Dan Gorringe and those boys, I had a bit good, I suppose, a bit of fun and. Um, with some good characters to be around, but um, yeah, we were on pretty strict guidelines. You had a bad Monday and stuff. It was when we hide out at bowls club and couldn't leave the vicinity. So yeah, um, okay. we're all in good behaviour uh, with the year I was up there. But um, yeah, I think it changed a bit by the time I rolled around in you know 2016. So. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, I've been informed that um, during your captaincy, you were really focused on the, the culture and respect um, side of things and doing things the right way. And it, I guess that sort of probably goes against maybe that sort of footy boy, um, sort of footy club culture in some ways. Um, was that a tough thing to implement or do you think like things are starting to change a little bit? I think it definitely is. I mean, nowadays, you know, as all clubs, are, I suppose, organisations, you've got to be really clear on what you stand for and, and, what, and what you're about. And I suppose at Sanford, I just thought, you know, you want, I want an environment you know, as a teacher. It's probably probably comes in a bit about you want players to be able to uh, pr- approach you or learn at any time. So if you're in an environment where the I suppose the top end players or your older players don't speak to younger players, it's not really a, an environment conducive to, to winning. And um, that respect stuff is, is massive. I, you know, I think there's sport teaches you a lot. Like I mean, I played well, 12 years at Westies, won one flag, and I didn't play finals outside that one year. We played won the flag, so. Sport teaches you a lot and that sort of respect and the hard work, discipline, all those things you actually learn throughout sport uh, is part of the reason you play. And it's still part of the reason I love, you know, pretending I'm a footballer and running around in the country and, um, and trying to get a kick back there. So, yeah. <laughs> so so as a teacher, your students aren't copying any Rocket Ede style sprays in the classroom? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should be. Maybe I should be. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I... I might half raise my voice a little bit just to get some attention. Yeah. They think I'm yelling and I just think, wow, the <laughs> different generation than what we copped and what I copped by Rocket. Yeah. Um, Can you get yeah. as high-pitched as him? Uh, no, I've tried. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a, I don't know, I don't, you've got to be really, really angry about something, you're really desperate sort of scream it is. Um, yeah, it's classic. Yeah, nice. Uh, we'll, get into, um, we'll get into a bit of uh, uh, Crows versus Sun stuff now. Yep. Um, there's been a few players traded between the two clubs, notable, notable for various reasons. Uh, Nathan Bock, Jared Lyons, Rory Atkins. Um, the most recent of which is uh, one sure to get things a little bit fiery on Saturday is the Rankin trade. Um, as yeah. a Gold Coast fan, is he enemy number one now or do you understand his well, trade request? He's, he's a tough one. He's actually a West Adelaide junior. So I played with oh, him. Oh, yeah, he was, um, yeah. And so when I – he actually debuted the year I was up there. So 2016, he debuted as a 16-year-old playing league. Um, and, yeah, took the absolute mickey out of the sand for I remember I came back and he was 17. So he's still bottom age. Not yet to get drafted. I think he had four goals, two, 20 touches um, in a loss at, out at North Adelaide. And the whole Barry Robert and Hill is giving him grief and he's just check him from the boundary. Um, <laughs> so I learned to love him pretty quick and he was an extremely talented player. So, no, nah, there's no, <laughs> I don't think there'd be too much. I think they all love him up there and he's a really happy go lucky guy and he's, it's hard to hate a guy who smiles as much as him and is as nice <laughs> as him. So, yeah. um, but geez, he's talented. So I think, <laughs> I hope he has a, an okay game, but not one that, that kills us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he seems like he, he loves getting into the opposition, but do you think he might make, tame oh, yeah. things down a little bit against the old club? I think so. I think so. I think I'll, there'll be probably enough of them out there that know what, exactly what he's like to hopefully <laughs> yeah. not fall for his for his bait because he does love a bit of uh, back and forth and a bit of banter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, ben, you got a, you got one here? 
Um, yeah, so you guys have had two weeks in a row up in Darwin. Do you think um, the extra game and spending the extra week up there will give you guys a big advantage? I think so. Actually, I remember the first time I, um, I was sort of um, thinking about, gee, how hot the Gold Coast is. Uh, and then I played my first NEFL game up in Darwin and just thought, gee, this is actually even hotter. So um, I think the conditions up there definitely suit Gold Coast and that sort of um, the conditions they train in all pre-season sort of suit them, reckon, up in Darwin. So they beat the doggies. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I reckon our tails are up and I reckon we're red hot chance. So um, I'm backing us in for sure. Yeah. Um, we we won our first 13 games against the Suns. Uh, the most recent forms, yeah, very mixed uh, with you guys winning two of the last three and the two in Queensland being sort of very convincing. Um, so do, do you expect that to continue? Uh, well, it's, oh, you're living in the past here. The first 13 don't count. That no, was that's right. Yeah. I was actually going to add to that. Yeah. Club, yeah. 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 I know. I, I was going to add our recent history. We grab whatever we can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fair. Yeah, that's fair. True. I, think I, I, keep, I think I read the other week, like the fledgling club of Gold Coast. I thought, how long can they have one of that for? It's been 13 years. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's probably time for us to turn around. And I, I actually think the Darwin factor will be probably the biggest one. Um, those conditions that, you know, the cold, wet game that um, Crows played in Sunday versus the heat that they spoke, I think they're used to already up there um, might help. But, yeah, I, I suppose a bit that kills me, similar to what the Crows have in the last couple of years, is just that inconsistency that uh, I'm sure you guys hate as well. Um, I see that, you know, we lose by five points to Melbourne the other week and, you know, we sort of let some game. We lost the um, gather round to Nor- uh, the, at Norwood Oval to Fremantle in an unlosable game. So the <laughs> frustration still, still sits there with that inconsistency, but yeah. I'm hoping we're starting to turn the corner now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I I actually had no idea you guys were 12th. I thought um, with your recent form, I had some really sort of inspiring wins that um, you were just expected you to be higher on the ladder, to be honest. Um, yeah. It's not often you see a, a club lower on the ladder, uh, in especially some, maybe a team like the Gold Coast that's um, yeah, favourites in a game against someone above them. So, yeah, it shows that um, things are turning around, which is, yeah. which is good for the Gold Coast. Um, Matty Rao. Now, um, looked like he really struggled last year after coming back from his injury, uh, but just over the last sort of five or six weeks, really looks like he's hitting his straps. Is that? Um, do you reckon he's playing as best as he ever has? Oh, I reckon eating that grass is doing wonders. So he's chewing <laughs> yeah. on that grass before the game. That's clearly work. I'm going to start doing it myself. Um, yeah, I think so. I think uh, I actually saw it was like, similar even when um, Gary Ablett came through and had that shoulder surgery. It was almost like a you know, there's a bit of a period where that post injury with such a contested, strong you know player like he is, he's probably I think taking a little bit longer than I suppose he'd probably like. Um, and as a massive fan, <laughs> that I'd like to get back to his best. But yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like he's back to his contestant stuff. His clearance work's been really strong the last few weeks. And I just like, he looks like a, just a footy nerd. You know, I love yeah. that aspect. Like, he looks like he's just having the best time in the world every game he plays, <laughs> even, even when we're losing. Yeah, absolutely. Like, he's, just, he's loving it. So he's good to watch. Um, and yeah, I, I agree. I think he's getting back to his best form now too, which is great. There's that classic photo of him standing. I think it was when he was injured in his polo, tucked in with his notebook there, standing yeah. with the pen. Yeah. It's such a classic. <laughs> it's on the bench. Yeah. yeah. Bench coaching. yeah. <laughs> Loves it. What a man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good. Um, all right. right, let's. Um, we're going ju- to uh, jump into the Dennis Armfield now. I've just got a little stinger before we do. Give the kick to Dennis. <laughs> right so we're him. right behind him, and the Carlton fans are right behind him. Once, twice, three times. Oh, look at that. Yes! <laughs> He's the master blaster. He's the master blaster. So uh, for any <laughs> for any new listeners, the Dennis Armfield is awarded to the player that um, maybe either is out of form or uh, you know maybe not maybe not the um, or show, hasn't really shown what they can what they can show and is and the Crows are going to allow that to happen. It and they probably us. won't show it again. Yeah, that may have potentially <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in the case yeah. of Dennis Armfield. Yes. Uh, so you got you got one for us, Tom. Yeah, I do. I do. I actually had a little. I was thinking about this one and. Uh, I'm going the Darwin native, Benny Long. Um, oh, yeah. Obviously, a recruit from uh, St Kilda uh, I think this year, must be this year, um, mm. which you picked up. And he's a, he's tough as nails, but he's sort of yet to have that game, just that game that I know he can break from half back. And I'm hoping he might even get a job on like a Rochelle because we need to stop um, that forward line. Crow's forward line is incredible at the moment. I still think they're this young team, but they seem to you know kick in scores against quality opposition. So Benny Long's one guy. I'm hoping he breaks through. Um, I'm still, still waiting to... See, well, my expectations will be obviously pretty high as a, as a fan watching us <laughs> made all these moves in the off season. So, yep. um, yeah, I'm hoping for a big breakout game from Benny. Yeah, yeah, I hope you're right, week. Tom, because uh, I've got him on my fantasy bench <laughs> and uh, I'm going to need to bring him in this week. So, <laughs> <laughs> has, he, has he been on the bench for a reason? Yeah, I'll put him there because he's shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
this is the week. This oh, is it. Love it. That's so uh, good. Um, yeah. All right. We've got a couple of just um, just quick ones before we get into some predictions. Um, but I uh, had one. What? Who? This is this is a bit of selfish because obviously you you've played against a lot of them. Um, toughest player you've played against from the Crows reserve setup. Crows reserve setup. Um, that's good. That is a good question. I mean, I, I was. Ooh, gee, that's a. I've been probably dominated by a lot of them actually, so that's probably not an <laughs> uh, easy one. Who is really talented? I'm trying to think of the some of the forwards I might have played on. Actually, someone that I didn't play on directly, but I cannot believe he's still playing Sample is uh, Strawny. Big Kieran okay. Strawn. He none of us can the, believe he, it. He's a, <laughs> he's a step above. I mean, I know Rob's obviously big guy. Brian's a, a bit of a man mountain himself, but Strawny seemed to take the Mickey out of us every time we played him. So <laughs> he'd take marks, he'd have hit outs. Um, yeah, he was one that. Um, and I, like I, said, I didn't directly play on him, but I remember just sitting there one day trying to man up on him, and he's just this big man. He moves really well. Um, I'm surprised another AFL team hasn't come knocking. Um, and if it wasn't yeah. for sitting behind Rory O'Brien, I reckon he, uh, Rory O'Brien, sorry, he'd be um, he'd be playing a lot more. I reckon. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Okay, yeah, because uh, obviously Rory O'Brien cops a, a little bit from um, various members of this podcast. <laughs> so it's um, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> various, yeah. <laughs> yeah. namely Samuel. Yeah, maybe me. But uh, I reckon last time he got dropped, he actually played against Arsenal. Like, what are the odds? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah nice. um, no, that's yeah. that's good. All right, so who's going to win? No, it's the Suns. The Suns <laughs> at, least, at least 14. At least 14. 14. I think the favourites, actually. Yeah, you the are. Rookies, I think we're yeah. favourites, yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Um, no, it's, you guys have had a big emotional week after the bounce back from the, the doggies and, you know, you sort of big big response. Now you've travelled up to Darwin, hot conditions. There'll be a bit of, a, bit of jet lag, I reckon, going north. I reckon, we're, I reckon we're in. I reckon we're in the chance. Yeah. 14 points. Suns 14, 14, 14 points. What do you think, Lauren? Um, I think if we're going to win on the road that this week's the week. Yeah, actually, and um, I think I, the week to do that is when we play West Coast in West Coast. <laughs> sure. Okay, Ben. Well, that's that, a while away. That's a while so away. Uh, we're but talking about this be, week. That'll be the week to win on the road. <laughs> I though, feel surely. like it should be this week, Ben. Um, especially after last week. Yeah. But um, yeah, I reckon um, I reckon Bird Joe's. Uh, Plan of um, putting the oh. bikes near the heater is a good one. <laughs> putting the bikes near the heater. <laughs> That's the so, technical right. term, isn't it, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> I, saw, I saw them kicking the footies in the rain on the news before, so I don't know oh, how. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know if they could acclimatise just yet. Yeah, look, I don't know. I feel like those extra saunas are going to work out for us. So yeah. I'm going to, uh, but I reckon it's going to be close. So I'm going to say uh, Crows by eight points. Yeah. Ben? Um, am I doing my whole thing, or yep. oh, no? Just your just your prediction. We'll prediction. Go into, we'll go into a bit more chat after. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if we lose, but I'm going to say a 17 point win. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm going to struggle in the conditions. I'm going to go for a 12 point loss, but that's because I'm always negative. You and are. every time I tip us, we lose as well. So, no, I can't oh, yeah. do it. Last time we played in humidity <laughs> against GWS, it didn't work well. But at least it's not in the middle of the day. That's true. Yeah, that is very true. Tom, are you enjoying playing down in the? Down where you are? I actually don't actually know which I mean, direction it yeah, is. Yeah, so it's in, yeah, it's in the River Murray League, the Murray Bridge League now. We've sort of got a new team. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's nice to sort of take a little step back from sample footy and the commitment and train a couple of times and see family a little, little bit more. But yeah, yeah nice. a bit more travel, but yeah, enjoying it. Did you yeah. have a hand in the naming of the new team? <laughs> I've been asked that way too many times. Uh, <laughs> no, we actually, we actually wear Giants colours. Yeah, I noticed that. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so there's actually a team in the next league over in Victoria called the Southern Mallee Giants. So okay. um, just to keep things original, that, like we all wanted apparently. Um, so yeah, the Southern Mallee Suns. But yeah, yeah okay. where, the, where the Port Adelaide V sort of set up with Giants colours Yeah, um, and called the Suns. Yeah, a bit random. Yeah, it was interesting looking at that, how that was all set up today. Uh, looked like a lot of sort of new teams. So yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for uh, being our inaugural uh, Gold Coast Nuff. Uh, it's been amazing to have you on. And thanks for giving us a little bit of insight into the old uh, Gold Coast days as well. And there's yeah, a good no chance the pool is not very wide that we might be calling upon you again. <laughs> 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 I was actually wondering what, what how many options I had for the Gold Coast Nuffy. So yeah. I'm happy to be on any time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate Tom. it. Appreciate Cheers, guys. All right. Thank you very much to Tom Keogh for joining us tonight. Uh, that was an excellent chat. How good, very insightful. Yes, yes. Great guy too. So that was that was very nice. All right. I know we gave some predictions in the chat. Mm. What's uh, well, You got some stats. So let's go to Ben for some stats first. What do you reckon? 
Um, well, they're minimal stats, but they are third for kicks, last for handballs. So, which is a similar way to how Brisbane have been playing, and mm-hmm. we held up pretty well against that defensively. So, um, I think their style of play isn't necessarily too bad for us. I think Bulldogs were more of a handball happy team that um, showed us up. Hawthorne, when they were beating us, um, were a lot more playing by handball. So, I think if they just kick it long a lot, I think our defence will hold up well. And we're we're a good chance, um, but they're a pretty hard team to know which version of Gold Coast is going to come. So they've been very good at times, quite poor at others. They do know the conditions well, um, but unlike last week, I feel more optimistic again. Um, so that's why I've gone with with the victory. But yeah, it's we really don't know. Our our recent form against Gold Coast is a bit like how it has been against GWS, and we can't get the chocolates. So. Hopefully we can change that around this time. We hadn't beaten Brisbane for a long time. So, yeah, yeah that's where my thoughts are at. For the Armfield, my two, a bit fantasy, but not not a, um, a long, but um, mm. the ratkins Fiorini um, <laughs> had pretty poor games last week. So depending on if both of them get picked, I think they're both quality um, Armfield potential. Look, yeah. No disrespect to Rory Atkins, but like – he must be loving life up there. Oh, yeah. He is on a mega contract and playing fuck all footy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good on you, Rat. Yeah. That's how you want to end your career. Yeah, I had uh, I had Atkins in as my... <laughs> <laughs> I could feel that coming for Rat like... you. <laughs> I could feel that coming for like 30 seconds and I thought I'd got rid of it. As oh, your uh, allergy? Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that, everybody, uh, if I don't edit it out. Uh, yeah, I had Ratkins in as my potential for Armfield this week because I think it would just be so funny if he came out and had an absolute blinder against That's us. That's heaps funny because, you know, I never think about this really, but I was like, it is going to be Rory Atkins. Mm. Yep. It would just make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, Tom's was a Tom's was a, a reasonable choice as well because obviously Long hasn't really hit his, stri- his straps up there yet. Uh, oh, look, I don't know. I, it's one of those games, isn't it, that uh, I don't know. I haven't watched a lot of Gold Coast this year, so I don't really know how good they are. I watched that game like that Tom mentioned about the, the Frio game that was here and uh, the one against – the watched a bit of the Bulldogs game on the weekend. They obviously look pretty good. I'll give you the last four rounds. Lost to Melbourne by five points. Then they beat the Eagles by like Lots. 60 points. Yeah. I mean, that's easy enough, right? Yeah. Then they lost to Brisbane by about 30-ish points, 40 points. And then they beat the Bulldogs by seven points. So well, they Bulldogs. Beat the Bulldogs and the umpires, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, apparently. So, I mean, obviously we got thumped by the Bulldogs, but that mm. was a different story because I was in Ballarat. E- West Coast Eagles, well, we can't even talk about them as a contender at all because no. they're shit. Uh, Melbourne, that's... That's not bad. Good Five team. points. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. I think it's going to be pretty bloody competitive. Yeah, I think it'll be a competitive game. I think – I don't like tipping us. Um, I, I don't know. I just always I, – I think I've – I don't know. Maybe I'm just negative. I, I, I don't think, think you um, need to explain yourself because that's right. You yeah, are just negative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think attitudinally we went to that Bulldogs game um, pretty self-satisfied. I mm. think – we have beaten Brisbane, which we you know builds our belief. But I think they're becoming aware that away from home we're not winning games. So I don't think they're going to Gold Coast thinking, "Oh, we just beat Brisbane, we can beat anyone." I think Hopefully. they're surely they're going there with, "We just beat Brisbane at home, let's try and beat someone away." Yeah, and yep. you know that's what I said on Twitter after the game this week is, "This is a game we need to win mm. to shut that talk up because we haven't won on the road yet and we need to win." Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Got to win this one. Yeah. Oh, I we, think we did beat the mighty Hawthorne Hawks. Oh, that, yeah. count. that doesn't count they, either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's what, what if this was at home, 100% I tip us. But it's uh, just that away from home, we haven't really proven ourselves this year. Mm. And that obviously away from home teams know that we are gettable. So I don't know. Like, you know, is it going to be like a Hawthorne game, but against a much better side and they're going to, and they run all over us. So yeah, let's hope not. We also, certainly, we absolutely can win. There's also, I'm just like, I'm just thinking about it and um, I've just gone back in time to that 
one game we played in humidity, and that was round mm. one against yeah. GWS. Yeah, that's right. <sighs> we don't like to talk about that <laughs> anymore. All right, are we done? Is that it? We're done. We are um, done. No update from the tribunal uh, with Rory Laird as no. of right now. Um, as of 7.34 Adelaide time. Funnily enough, the Crows are trying to argue that uh, Lockie Neal's momentum <laughs> uh, was what uh, – caused the sling, which is exactly what I fucking said. <laughs> so he better get off. <laughs> do we have to put a double explicit warning on this one? Lauren's gone rogue. Bit over the top. Yeah. Um, well, I, had no, I didn't have much to say last week and this week. I've got plenty to say, right? <laughs> yeah. so, and I've, I've put in my request for the outro song again. Oh, you yes, have. you have. Uh, one, but, one for Indigenous Round. Mm-hmm. For Miller. Do you want to say something, Sam? Oh, well, I was going to do the outro more than your bumbling into the song. What's all right, all right. Yeah. finish it up, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, calm down, man. All right. <laughs> if you haven't looked at our merch, sorry for getting so excitable. Oh no, right. If you haven't looked at our merch, please go and look at our merch. If you haven't told a friend that likes the crows that also might like podcasts about us, please do that. If you want to write us a review, that would also be excellent. We we'd, we'd like some new listeners. Also, we love um, you, but we want some more. Send us an email, and I just want to shout out to uh, Paul who did send us an email um, the other week. Oh, yeah, about we, still, we were gonna, said we were going to do that this week, didn't about we? An idea to discuss. And, Paul, I just want you to know that we have read the email and we are fascinated and intrigued by the subject matter. Mm. We just need to find some time to give this room. Oh, bye week. Bye week is That's the week. Right. So yeah, we will get to your email, Paul. Appreciate it. Uh, HeweCrowPod at gmail.com is the email address. So yes. don't sign us up to any spam. <laughs> but uh, please um, feel free to get in touch. Uh Let's not forget that we have a big interview this week. That we we're do. dropping later. If anyone is still listening at this point, stay tuned. We might we'll drop it Thursday morning. Got an interview. Who's it with? Do you want to drop a secret? Or drop a little hint? Oh uh, yeah. It's relevant to the current media cycle. Woozle <laughs> <laughs> wuzzle. <laughs> That, yeah. Oh, what a hint! No, no one, will, no one's guessing that. It's all very, very cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Anyway, yeah. stay tuned for that. Good chat. Yes, it is an excellent chat. He's a nice guy. All right, we're done. This is it. That's it. Yep. Bye, Lauren. No, nice knowing you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Lauren. Bye. Bye, Ben. Bye, Sam. Bye.